day two at SNA 2017. Today we're discussing sensors and effectors. This is a half-scale model of the Lorazm cruise missile, and right now Lorazm is going through its uh, development program. It's getting into the integration and test phase of the program. They're scheduled for flight testing off of the B-1B bomber in the third quarter of this year and on track to meet their EOC commitment of uh, FY18 on the B-1 bomber and FY19 on the F-18 Super Hornets. In parallel with the Navy maturing Lorazm as the OASUW Increment 1 solution, Lockheed Martin has been investing in a vertical launch, surface launch variant of the same missile. And that's what we have here in this scaled down version of the Mark 41 BLS with the Lorazm installed in it. And we've been investing in that for several years. And that investment culminated with a successful flight test last year in July of 2016 from the self-defense test ship, proving that missile launching in a relevant environment from a real Mark 41 in an end-to-end -end flight test. All right, Scott, uh, what are you showcasing here? Well, the next opportunity for Lorazm is an emerging opportunity called the Frigate Over the Horizon uh, Weapon RFP. That draft RFP was issued in December, and the final RFP will be coming out in January. For that platform, we need a top side launcher. They don't have BLS. So I talked about launching from a BLS. Without a BLS, you need a top side launcher like this. So we have a concept for that launcher. It's a modular system where you could have two missiles on a launcher or a four pack, and it would go on top of a platform such as this frigate anywhere where there's flat deck space. So we have a concept for that launcher. We're building our first one, building a prototype, and planning for a flight test in the summer of this year. Uh, in your opinion, as a closing statement, what, uh, why should the U.S. Navy pick Lorazm for the LCS OTH? There's been a lot of talk here recently about distributed lethality. And for the frigate and the LCS to play a big role in distributed lethality, they need a missile with extremely long range, and that's what Lorazm brings to the brings to the, uh, the Navy. I'm here to present the Ceros 200 Fire Control Director System, which you can see next to me. This is a fire control radar used for gunfire control and also missile fire control for naval ships. It's installed in 15 countries with various customers, NATO customers such as Denmark and Norway, Canada, Australia, etc. And we are here now in US to show this to the Navy for real. So we have a real system here. The system consists of a tracking radar, which is a KU band radar with a very high power and high precision to track, initiate track of an air target or a sea skimming missile. This radar can then designate to any gun, for example, the Mark 110 as you have on the LCS or any other gun, or can be used for ESSM illumination. Uh, to shoot down that air target or a sea skimming missile. We also have an optical suite, so it's a TV camera, a laser range finder and infrared camera. So you can uh, do passive tracking, that means no transmitting, and to, in for the same effect, to shoot down missiles. The main quality is the performance. There is no other system on the market with the same performance. We can shoot down sea skimmers with this with this director with a, with a Mark 110 gun. So it's uh, affordable and uh, relatively lightweight compared to other solutions on the market. And it's fully stabilized with uh, proven, and it's proven in delivery to many countries around the world. So that's what we're here to present.
we have here is a product that 901D did the design for, and it's a combination of both companies here. We depend on our sister company, Milcots, which is a spin-off from 901D. This product here is a great example of uh, electronic packaging that the company does. And again, we use both companies here. The display portion that's on it is from Milcots, and 901D did the design of the table and of the uh, racks inside that hold the commercial equipment. And basically we're looked at as solving problems to make sure that commercial equipment can be used in deployed situations. So this is a perfect example of that and a perfect example of both companies working together for a solution for uh, SQQ89 program. The system is called CADRT, Computer Aided Dead Reckoning Table, and what this does is help the Navy tie together their different sensors that's used for undersea warfare, and it's used for planning and executing of missions uh, for surface ships, primarily the DDG. Well, what we're showcasing here is a, a board that shows our integrated electric drive technologies. Um, this is sort of a view of uh, we generate and control power, we deliver it and we store it. And uh, the showcase in this particular case is based on our aircraft carrier program. In the United States, um, I think General Atomics has the distinction of being the, the only demonstrated provider of a fully electric drive system from producing the power to controlling the power to releasing the power and over and over again and this technology is called uh, the electromagnetic aircraft launch system the advanced arresting gear the electromagnetic aircraft launch system uh, uh, program has uh, started in 1999 with General Atomics um, we just uh, finished the installation of hardware for CVN 78 the Gerald Ford and the same thing with advanced arresting gear started a little bit later in 1999 early 2000s um, it's been a bit more of a struggle from a schedule standpoint, but we had a good year in 2016 and uh, we produced uh, uh, 350 or so aircraft arrestments with manned planes. The technology though is uh, in the gigawatt class, which means we produce a lot of power and we deliver a lot of power. You know, when you think about a system like EMALS, you've got to create a lot of electricity, release it to launch an airplane. That's really not a lot different than what we have to do in a fusion reaction. In a fusion reaction, we will pulse about 2,000 kilowatts of power over a fraction of a second in order to have a magnetic field to do a fusion reaction. That's what kind of made General Atomics a natural to be working on this program. So um, we talked about the aircraft carrier launch and arresting system. This sign is about how do you establish sea control with electric technologies. And so. Um, you know, today we use missiles and ammunition um, to be able to defend the ship, defend the carrier, um, and what you're seeing is a representation of three different directed energy technologies. Um, there are two technologies that we're flying in the air, and then there's one technology that we uh, show down in this picture. Um, this shows a, an electromagnetic railgun. We're very similar to the electromagnetic aircraft launch system. We have to provide um, a great deal of stored energy and we have to release it very quick. And when we release energy in a railgun, we're trying to push a hybrid missile out of the railgun at speeds of about 5,000 miles an hour. Uh, and you need to release about two gigawatts of power. Um, and uh, the order of magnitude is probably anywhere from 10 to 20 megajoules of energy. Those numbers are huge, um, but the, the controllability of that technology really came out of what we did on the aircraft carrier EMALS program. So the technology here shows that we could be uh, uh, um, fighting cruise missiles or other kinds of missile systems, um, perhaps uh, doing uh, protection on the ship. In that case, you could see a strike uh, to a, uh, uh, an enemy uh, uh, combatant. Um, but that's one technology. There are other technologies that would help out. And so on this ship, you see one of uh, General Atomics' remotely piloted airplanes. 
This is a version of what we call our jet engine program, the Avenger program. And the Avenger program, um, it has the, the room to put our solid state laser program. And you can see a solid state laser uh, taking out a, a, an airplane in this particular case. But that solid state laser is line of sight, speed of, sound, uh, speed of light, that is, excuse me. Um, very, very lethal. And you, you can basically uh, stay high enough away uh, from the target and be able to engage. So that's another technology as part of our layered defense. We could do laser technologies, railgun technologies, but then you want to have in your back pocket a non-lethal technology. In this case, the non-lethal technology is a um, high power radio frequency or microwave technology where you don't necessarily want to destroy a vessel, you want to be able to stop it. And so this is also one of General Atomic's remotely piloted airplanes. This is our, our Sea Guardian uh, variant of a, a Reaper. And what we're doing here is we're generating a, uh, a very high frequency capability to basically shut down aircraft, or in this case, we're shutting down uh, air, um, uh, a fast ship or other kind of ship. And the, the trick with high power microwave is you don't want to burn something. You want to be able to disrupt the battery or the electronics. And uh, we, we have contracts with the United States Department of Defense, and we have internal development where we're trying to make this something that we can put on an airplane, properly shield that, uh, and direct that uh, so that we can uh, do non-lethal uh, interdiction. Uh, and we've been testing one of our concepts for the last couple of years. We think we have a way to get more and more standoff uh, and it's very, very exciting technologies. All three of these technologies rely on two very important uh, components. Uh, switching devices, high frequency switching devices, kind of like what I talked about on the carrier program. And secondly, in order to release energy and control it, you need capacitors or batteries. Uh, on the railgun system uh, and on the high power radio frequency system, General Atomics is a world leader in capacitor development where we store energy. Uh, and we also store energy, uh, in, mostly in power, uh, in uh, lithium ion batteries or lithium polymer batteries. And what enables the application of our uh, solid state lasers is the ability to have very, very small content to be able to store that uh, power and energy and to be able to control it very accurately. All three of these technologies are being developed by General Atomics today.